Yeah. So I figured we'd start like, Scott, if you want to give some insight into your um, background and like how Tabor AI was founded. Sure. Sure. So brief background, um, I guess 40 years in business, first 20 was all has been in the care of seniors in the country. Uh, first 20 was um, in the uh, senior housing world where I owned, operated, took public and sold several senior housing, assisted living, memory, skilled nursing uh, platforms. And then um, exited that market and started, uh, thought I was done, thought I was going to retire and then uh, couldn't retire, got bored and uh, started in a Medicare Advantage health plan. So went from the housing tide to the managed care side and uh, uh, we stood up alignment healthcare um, where we, uh, we originally were just in, in California and then we expanded with uh, some tactical partners to Florida, North Carolina, and now Alignment, I think, resides in Arizona, Nevada, Texas, and they continue to expand. Um, I ran the East Coast for Alignment and uh, had the opportunity to meet um, uh, Keith Gleason at that, in that endeavor, um, as well as a lot of other FMOs operating within the Eastern states. Um, and I saw that, I saw that trouble they had and i sat in several of keith's education um, seminars to get these young agents um, accustomed to, to selling medicare getting comfortable with it and actually sticking with it and i think what we found was that the more majority of those young agents um they quit within the first year uh and i know that firsthand because i got my daughter involved in selling medicare um for several different fmos and uh, she lasted for a couple of years, did very innovative things like ran TV commercials and that type of thing, but just was too difficult to keep going. So um, she couldn't get over the hump. And I think that's the hardest thing for agents is to get over the hump. So along comes um, artificial intelligence. Um, we're, you know, I'm, I'm involved with both a company called Skypoint AI um, and now Tabor AI, Skypoint, Skypoint is a Microsoft company where Microsoft backed um, when AI first broke into uh, into the market about a year and three months ago. Uh, Microsoft came to us and said, we think you should be uh, entering this and, and uh, doing some very specific um, case studies around AI and how it could work into the, into the market. So um, that led to SkyPoint um, delivering their product, their product being a uh, highly sensitive HIPAA, SOC 2, high trust compliant internal data to health plans, um, hospital systems, physicians, anything that dealt with patient data, um, SkyPoint deals with. So they work with a cadre of different, I think they have 100 different clients now um, in that, uh, in the uh, patient care space. So um, we then looked at it, we, and from my experience in in the uh, FMO world, I said, there's gotta be an easier way for these agents to sell Medicare. And uh, we came up with the idea of Tabor, Tabor AI. And Tabor AI is a tool, and we've developed it into a tool which makes the enrollment, uh, enrollment support and uh, retention of, of members and clients about 10 times easier than it was before. So what took an agent about six hours to determine, you know, what the best health plan was for an individual because of uh, where they lived, age, uh, chronic conditions, you know, polychronic conditions, um, physician networks they were in, hospitals, um, the formulary they were on, how many drugs were they on, were they covered, not covered, it takes an agent about six hours to determine what the best plan was for that individual. Um, we have now at Tabor loaded in all those variables um, throughout the country. Um, we continue to load them in um, all plans through CMS data, all plans and their benefits, what they cover, what they don't cover. Um, loaded it into Tabor 
And um, consequently, when an agent logs on the Tabor and asks for the best plan, given the variables that I just stated, they um, it takes them about 10 seconds. And, uh, and the best option out there in that marketplace comes right to the surface and, uh, and is given to them. So it took it from six hours to 10 seconds. I think that's a pretty good improvement. Yeah. So, so how's it, one thing that like, I, when I first looked at, I was thinking like, how's this different than a lot of the GPT plugins that you'd see that you can use? Yeah. So commercial GPT plugins, GPT 3.5, GPT 4 are commercial products. Um, and they, uh, they are limited to commercial knowledge. The, the nuance in building a large language model AI platform is the education that you give it. If you think of the thing as a, as a child, the child knows what you teach it and it retains it. Now, you know, as an AI platform and an AI model, it retains everything. So good, bad, and different. So you have to educate it. The, the, the commercial chat GPT products don't have all the specific information of all CMS in, in, their, um, in, their, in their knowledge. So it can't give you, although it can give you some general information, it's not gonna be able to give you a specific um, uh, best option uh, information. That has to be educated. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned like the, how Tabor cuts down on an agent's time. Like what are some of the other barriers to entry to an agent getting up and running that Tabor can help them with? Um, well, number one, I think, I think an FMO is going to experience, experience a much larger uh, agent retention. They're not going to quit. Right. So um, because it's going to be easier, agents are going to make more, more money, get more enrollments. FMOs are going to get more, enrollments and make more money. Um, the other thing that Tabor does is, uh, is it, it can act as a CRM and support their book of business, right? So any notifications that need to go out, any renewals, and it will analyze the renewals and, and tell you what, you know, from year to year, is, is this still the best health, health plan you're gonna be on? Or do we need to, uh, you know, do we need to switch it up and go to, go to another health plan that, has either increased or maintained its star rating and, and its benefits. So I think that's another huge, I think managing the book of business that that agent has, as well as new enrollments are the one to punch. Scott, how does it, how does it work with the CRM? Is it through like an open API integration? Like, or I mean, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you know, the tools and, you know, knowing that Tabor is being designed by FMOs for FMOs. So everything that we're designing into the product is going to is is being taught to us by you guys in, in directing us as to you know what do you need? What do you want? Do you know do you want it do you want do you want us to tie back into CMS for enrollment? Do you want a, you know a scope of appointment? I mean what you know what are the various tools that you want to see in, in Tabor? And those are all going to be added in. Now we can't do it day one, everything day one. This is work in progress. So, uh, so it is some of it's trial and error. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a you know the market leading powerful tool for an agent to use. Yeah, a lot of pe a lot of agents will ask like, well, can it be my assistant? Like that's always something that comes up on the back. End. Yeah, yeah. So you know. Um, We've we've migrated to Copilot, right? And so we're we're generating private Copilots for for different FMOs. And uh, Copilot is just what it says. It's a it's a guy sitting. It's a it's an AI body sitting next to you, um, listening to you and and learning from you and being able to um, predict, assess, and execute on on your needs. So do you know, do you have any examples of like more complex uh, scenarios that uh, like, like Tabor can help with? Like, I mean, you have somebody that has like a trash bag of medications or like just, you know, like because of a lot of agents, like when you get with those 20, 15, 20 meds and Keith, you can speak to this. It's just so time consuming. It's overwhelming as well. It's not yeah. just the time. It's the, you know, we can handle the the generic medications, because those even without insurance, you can get at a local pharmacy for less than 10 bucks. It's the really hard to pronounce names 
the ones you see on TV, those are the ones where there are tier four specialty drugs and the amount of anxiety that an agent has with getting that right. It's not like you can make a mistake there as an agent, as a broker. That's yeah. like their most important medication. And I think that's the biggest fear for an agent, not having confidence that the information is right, even though you get it, you know, from a, uh, from CMS, it's, it's not only the amount of time that you have to do to load those, to understand them, to figure out what tier, but it's, it's the anxiety of knowing, is that the right price that I'm giving my client? Yeah. A lot of those third-party tools are not always accurate, you know, cause it could have been a misstep and, and like you're saying how the data was loaded. And so, I mean, ta does Tabor recognize those missteps or like how are they more accurate than like a Connecture or a Sunfire? Well, you know, you look at Connecture, Sunfire, those are, you know, those are rules-based engines, right? They're not AI. So um, they're a static view of the data that's been input to them. Tabor on the other end, on the other side is an AI tool that is live. So it's continually assessing and upgrading. Now, you know, you've got the big variables are, are, are drugs and provider networks, right? And so, you know, on, on the, the pharmacy side of things, it's a little bit more static. I mean, if it's loaded in by, uh, by, by a health plan, it's gonna stay that way for, for the year. On the, on, the, on the physician side of things, physicians are going in and going out of, of you know, networks all the time. That's that's more different difficult solution, and we can you know we only know what what they're telling us. So we try to stay as up to up to date on it. Um, it is dynamic, and it you know we 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 do a pretty good job, but we're not going to be foolproof. We're not going to be hundred percent. And you know I think that you know an agent this will answer. You know if if we can if we can resolve seventy percent of an agent's you know frustration with 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 um with bringing on a, a, a new client then he's 70 percent ahead you know if we're going to get it to 80 90 percent all the better um there there are going to be issues i'm not you know I'm, this thing is not foolproof it's 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 how it learns it's what the information it's it's been input into it but it but it is live and dynamic now i'll, I'll give you a specific example you asked for an example my mom and i just did this a couple of weeks ago so she's, on, she's in California. She's on a plan called SCAN, which is a West Coast plan. And she is on their Medicare Advantage HMO plan, uh, SNP plan. She's on 15 different medications for her heart condition, for diabetes, um, for her blood pressure. She's just, she's all over the place. She's 93 years old. Um, and so I loaded all that into Tabor and I said, so given given all these drugs that I can't pronounce, given the physician network that she's in, given her primary care physician, given the, the hospital that, that she likes to go to, what is the best plan for her? And lo and behold, it came up that it wasn't scan. It, it happened to be alignment, which was my old plan. But, um, but uh, I, found that, I found that very interesting that it, it would actually uh, be able to determine that, you know, what she's on is not, is not the best option. There's a better option out there. So, and she's, you know, she's happy with scan scan lost uh, star rating this last year. So they had to cut back on benefits. Um, alignment didn't. So I think that's a big, a big, you know, that's a big variable too. So that's why every year it's dynamic. Every year these plans change the, you know, the benefit design changes, you know, um, I can't tell you how many times I, you know, you know, we were a Humana partner in North Carolina, and how many times I, we sat in the and designed the benefits for the following year with Humana. It was uh, it's it's a it's a dynamic process. Mm. So, it, you need to stay on top of your game, or you're going to lose your you're going to lose your book. One thing I found with like other GPTs that was always a problem was the hallucinations, right? Like it would say things that wouldn't be true, right? But from what I looked at so far, the Tabor, they'll just say, we don't know the answer. It won't give you the wrong answer, which in itself is a huge benefit. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, uh, 
uh, note are sources at the bottom of every response. So you can ex see exactly where that response came from, whether it's CMS, whether it's a specific health plan, um, it will tell you, uh, it will tell you, it will give you the origination of that response. Um, and I will say something to the hallucination front. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a humanoid type learning um, entity. And it, if, you, if you put shit in, you get shit out, right? Yeah. And that's what leads to halluc hallucinations. If it's not well-trained and well-educated, it doesn't, it doesn't know it's hallucinating. It just tries to answer things that it really shouldn't be answering. Ours, on the other hand, um, we try to, we do load it in with all the pertinent information. We, we recite those info, where that information is coming from. Um, and if it doesn't know, it will tell you, it will tell you that it doesn't know and where you should go to try to find that answer. So, I mean, that's, well, which, is the, which is a big advantage too. I mean, yeah. The GPTs will respond to how they're being asked the question. You could ask the same question in two different ways. They'd give you two different answers too. Yeah. Yeah. So without the training piece, I mean, that that's huge. <clears throat> um, question. Yeah. Go ahead. So Scott, the um, Dr. Jones that's at Duke switches practices and systems and goes over to UNC is who's going to inform Tabor of that? And is it going to be faster than the other tools out there that seem to be wrong quite a bit because of, time, yeah. because of timing? Yeah. So Tabor has a direct link to, you know, the provider portals of different plans, right? So if there's a change in that provider network, it knows about it. Um, it you know, it, is it, is it real time? No, it takes, it takes, how long is it going to take Humana to input the fact that Dr. Jones is no longer in network and has, has switched? Or is Dr. Jones still in network? He's just not at, at Duke, he's at UNC. So um, it just, it takes that, it, it, it's, it's, got, it's got a human component to it. And that's the input of the information by the humans. So how, is more, how is it more, how is it more, accurate and more efficient with the change than some of the other non-AI um, because when 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 those non -A, when those rules-based platforms load into data it's static data and that's that's what it is until that data is changed it stays the same so that's why it's that's why it's inaccurate is because things change and the physician portal is the most is is probably the hardest to to manage for for everybody. Right. So does is Tabor AI every night looking to see if there's a change in the network, whereas um, another tool out there that's not AI, are they waiting for the um, you know the the carrier to inform the tool? Like yeah, we do up, like every night when it refreshes. We do it. We do a weekly sleep. refresh. I know we can't do an every night refresh, but we do right. a weekly refresh. Yeah, right. So, Scott, what are what were some of the I guess biggest challenges to developing a co-pilot? Like, was it the compliance? Was I know we're talking about the doctors specifically now, but just in general. Um, you know, <laughs> the biggest challenge is that you know that AI is now fourteen months old. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we jumped in right at the beginning. Um, I would say the two biggest challenges to AI are the compute capability. So you need, you know, you need, you need the chips to be able to do it. Uh, and um, they're not readily available. It takes, they're extremely expensive. Um, they're not, they're not available at this point. Um, NVIDIA is completely, is completely overwhelmed and sold out till I think 2028. Um, we were very fortunate in being related to Microsoft and, uh, getting in very early to, um, to get a, to get the compute that we needed. We now have a direct relationship with NVIDIA and we get our, we get the chips directly from them. Um, and, uh, I think that's, I think that's the game changer is you can't, you can't get the compute space that you need to be able to develop an AI product. So two things, compute. And then, and then the uh, the knowledge workers that are able to build these things because it's so new, you know the tech, the, the technical support that you need to build these things is is difficult. And 
you know, SkyPoint, we're already in the business. We already know what we're doing. We already have a huge, you know, huge engineering office in Bangalore and, and one here in the United States. So we, we know we know the drill. We know what we're doing. We know how to build it. We know how to educate it. And we know how to ingest all that information. So are we perfect? I'm not saying we're perfect. We're going to make mistakes? Yeah, we're, we'll make mistakes. Um, are there going to be a lot of mistakes? I don't think so. I think that, uh, I think, and the beauty about AI is the more questions you ask it, the smarter it gets. So, you know, if it, if it has the intelligence of a, you know, first year uh, physician just out of medical school within a very short period of time, it's, it's going to have the, it's going to have the intelligence of a very senior, senior physician in any medical system that there is out there. So today, you know, you've heard it said, you know, I, I attend a lot of seminars, um, you know, Harvard and MIT are working on this thing you know, lights out. I mean, they're just, they're, they're going at it. And they'll tell you that today it's, it's, it has the intelligence of an average physician. Within 12 months, it will be a very seasoned physician. What do you think of- Go ahead, Jason. No, I was just going to say, I mean, you're speaking to this now, like where, where is it going to be in five years? Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's going to, it is going to be crazy. Now, that being said, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people out there that say, yeah, we've got AI. Are you operating a large language model? You know, artificial intelligence platform. And the answer to that is, oh no, we're just you know we're dealing with with algorithms and and you know doing it the same old way as we all. I mean, define AI. So where is where is where is AI? Where is the Chat GPT and the and, and you know and and Open AI going to be in five years? It where it's how far it's come in a year is unbelievable. And, you know, and the next year is going to be, it's going to be even more unbelievable and it's just going to gain speed. It's going to change the, it will change the world. It will change the way we do business. Is it going to, is it going to have a direct relevance to every business application out there? No, but I think if you, and if you, if you look at, you know, what they're telling us now is you've got this, this shallow horizontal, just general, like you said, chat GBT, and then you've got these vertical silos that are, that are deep knowledge learning that are specific use case solutions and Tabor is one of those verticals and it's up to us to make sure that we educate it as completely and thoroughly as possible and that it gets used the queries that it gets it learns from it it learns from every every person every agent that's asking its question it's taking into its into its memory and learning from those and learning from those queries so have you done a taste test with an agent with customer A and these uh, metrics or filters, prescriptions, network, um, Medicare Advantage, uh, prescription drug plan with, I don't know, there's Aetna, Humana, alignment, what have you. Have you done a taste test as far as the agent, the broker using Tabor yeah. on scenario A and then scenario B similar you know different name customer similar complexity with the scenario and have you done a taste test of who who wins who, what do you mean which, who, one's who? which one's faster which one gets to the you know the solution the solution against against Tabor and and a guy doing it on his own just Let, let's say we have Jason who uh, is a seasoned Medicare broker very experienced, um, but let's pick a state that he's in, but he's not 100% familiar with it because it's not his go-to uh, resident state. And we provide him with Bob and Sue, two separate customers with similar complexity as far as tiered medications, network, um, preferences like dental, hearing, so on and so forth and give him both scenarios. One, use the current situation, the current tool that you have now. And what? then- Medicare.gov, uh, plan finder? Or <laughs> that, whatever that's he, what you're gonna whatever use? he uses. He, yeah. you know, can, who, who do you use now? Skype Osmosis. Connector, who do you, Sunfire. Who do you use now? Sunfire. 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 Yeah. Okay. So Jason's gonna use his current environment, current, you know, handy tool. And then he's gonna, come up with 
these are the two options that best meet the customer's needs. And then obviously we can validate based on, you know, 10 other agents, who did you come up with just to confirm that that's the, that's the right solution. Then this is the taste test where you then have Jason do the other customer using Tabor AI, dictating these, you know, whatever the efficiency of Tabor AI is, does it come up with a, a quicker solution? I mean, you say it does, anecdotally so maybe, so but have you done answer, a taste test? So to, yeah, to answer your question, uh, we, lent, we launched the beta version of Tabor last open enrollment in Oregon, because that's where SkyPoint's headquartered in Oregon. And so we had one of the larger FMOs, an integrity FMO in Oregon, um, use it during uh, open AI or open, open enrollment. Um, I can tell you that uh, within a very short period of time, those agents were all migrating over to Taylor um, as, their, as, their, right. as their primary source of determining which plan was the best. Because and I and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say oh we're better than you know X Y or Z I'm just telling you what we do is is it's it's very accurate and it's very efficient and it let does it let the broker it. decide let the bro let the broker decide if they you know and I'll, I'll tell you what that FMO now is teaching classes to all of their agents on how to use Tabor and how to get online with it because it's making them it it's it's increased their sales significantly markedly so. They, they are finding it as it, this is a great tool and it's going to it's going to increase my revenue. So why wouldn't I be stepping back and, and you know, and you know, training everybody how to use it? And I think we're going to see the same thing as we move out across the country. Um, we're, we're you know, we're, we're now ingested in, in probably 30 percent of the states and, and by June we'll be in 100 percent of the states. Scott, do you think to it's... come up with it? I'd love to come up with. Uh, two two customers, and then we can use you know one of Jason's agents or yeah, well, you, someone. You guys will be you guys will be uh, loaded up here shortly. So yeah, oh, we can even it. use it. Yeah, yeah, we can use uh, you know one of Diane's agents where it's the same competent level agent, right? Because then you limit the variables there, and just see what the results are, and and, and video it like like literally video watching the agent struggle going through this or that. And then using Tabor AI, and hopefully, you know, we see that there's uh, more efficiency and the, the, the right solution uh, that comes out. Well, Scott, how do you think like the earlier adopters, like agents are going to benefit, like the sooner you start, right? They're going to have a choice. They're either going to sell a lot more or they're going to go fishing. Yeah. Right. Because their status quo is going to be, it's going to be an easy to reach goal. So, you know, what, what do you do with it? What do you do with the additional time that, that's given you in a day? It's, that's up to you to decide if you want to sell more and increase your revenue, you're going to sell more. You choose to, you know, make it a part-time job and, and take the rest of the time off and, and do avocational activities. And that's what you're going to do. So, yeah. How expensive is your wife? That's what you have to ask yourself. Yeah. <laughs> She doesn't listen to this, so I think it should be good. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a, I just got a Scott question. Like, so you've been, you've been in with a lot of different organizations, right? Like, I don't know, double digits, something like that, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? So what, what involvement in what specific organ, organization are you most proud of or that gave you the most satisfaction? Hmm. Uh, boy, you know, I would, I would I would answer that in, in my two halves of my career. Um, the company that we, you know, and I, I did a lot in the senior housing space, but we we spent the most amount of time building Renaissance um, senior living, and we 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 built it to one of the mark the one of the the best operating companies in the country, um, and uh, we we're on the West Coast, and today today it survives as as kind of a um, the West Coast, um, Brookdale Senior Living. So the West Coast properties for Brookdale were all my Renaissance properties that I sold. Um, so that would be one. And then the second one would, would have to be alignment and building it, taking it, 
and and you know it, it, taking it from a from an absolute dead startup and and building into a publicly traded company and uh i mean the stock's gotten hit but i think that's that's nothing that you know alignment is a great plan i mean you know our our treatise at alignment was better care for the senior through through enveloping it in technology and that's exactly what we did and if you know, if an you know the biggest expense to a Medicare Advantage plan is hospitalization by its members, and if the average for the United States of an MA plan is is five hundred per thousand admit, admits, ours at alignment was one hundred and thirty. I mean, that's how efficient we were in predictive analytics and really uh, managing our our members uh, proactively and making sure they had everything they needed, and that would be through you know through tech uh, tech devices like Vivify, uh, stratifying the risk population, getting out there and, and we had a we had a we had a our, our, we had clinics all over and um, and we didn't care anywhere where we would go out to the individuals' homes and meet with them and take and make sure that they had everything they needed. Um, so social determinants of health, we focused on that, that way before anybody else did. Uh, you know, the first uh, give back card was the black card was alignments. Um, so we did a lot of very innovative things that um, that now a lot of people do and a lot of people are trying to do. But I think so that would be my my second. I think the biggest opportunity um, is is Tabor. Yeah, out of those two, those were great at both great exits. Tabor, Tabor, I think is and I think AI is opened up a whole new. Uh, you see Bill Gates coming back into Microsoft. Bill Gates is not coming back to Microsoft because. He just wants to go back to work. He sees it as a lifetime opportunity. So I think, and I think AI, I think if you adopt AI so early, you're going to be vastly successful. If you languish and adopt it midstream, you're going to do okay. If you resist and you don't adopt it and you continue to use, you know, plan finder and medicare.gov, you're going to die because everybody else is going to take your business. So it's, I just, uh... I, it's the new internet. Like of all the people that adopted the internet early, look where, look where they're at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, and you, you've heard it said that, you know, search is dead. So uh, Google's, you know, and that's Google. And, and, and I tend to agree. I mean, you ask AI a question, it gives you the answer. You don't have to go and look at 10 different results and kind of read through the 10 different results to come up with a solution. It gives you the solution. That's yeah. the difference. What's uh what's next for Tabor? Like so right now, plan comparisons, uh, you know, asking it plan specific questions. Will it be enrollments? Will it be um, you know, renewals? What do you yep. see next? Email all all the above. Uh, yeah, those are all just those are just all just facets we're carving into the diamond, right? So I think I think enrollment, I think scope of appointment, I think managing your book, helping you to manage your book of business. And, and actually to play the part of your assistant and reaching out and connecting with, with, with your members, with your, with your clients and staying in front of them um, so that they don't forget about you. I think that's going to be a big, that's going to be a big asset to the, um, uh, to the agents. And I think it can do all this, you know, if, if you use it, it can do it all very easily. So now where are we in the development of it? We're just, you know, we're meeting guy, with guys like you that are, you know, what do you need? How do you see, how does this work? Does it, you know, is this the best? We're not, we're not going to build it in a silo. We're going to build it with the input of, of guys that are experts and gals that are experts. I have a live uh, practical example right now where it, Tabor would certainly help me. So um, here in North Carolina, one of the hospital networks uh, did not reach an agreement after January 1st. So we have these MAPDs with plan A and I'm getting calls from them saying, I just got a letter saying that the hospital network that used to be in network is no longer in network. Can you help me find a plan? So I would then go in to Tabor AI and say, please find the most similar plan to plan ABC one, two, three of carrier Y, but with this network and carrier. Right. So with that, you got to make, you, it's all about how you ask the question, right? Do you want to stay with the same plan or no, they do you want to stay, do you want to stay with, do you want to stay with the hot, with the system 
Do you want to stay with the hospital system that's in network? I want to go to the, I want to keep my hospital system. That yep. I just got a letter on. Same thing as a position. Right. Yeah. So if I type in, he's got plan ABC123 with carrier Y. Um, he wants to stay with the hospital network. If I ask the question, what is most similar to ABC 123Y, but with a different carrier that's in the network of the hospital that just got dropped by my carrier? Yeah. So you can talk to AI. You can talk to Tabor like you would in like a, a human. That's what I mean. So I yeah. I so you just you just it. ask. You say hey, and I'm gonna you got a Humana shirt on, so I'm just gonna say you know you know Humana was not able to reach agreement with you know with UNC. And they are no longer contracted with UNC and no longer in network. What plan has the most similar benefits that has UNC in network? And that's, that's how what you I want it to do for me. Yeah, that's what you want it to do for you. Isn't that a live good example, Jason? That's awesome. Yeah, for and, sure. And, and a veteran agent, they're going to be like, oh, let's just switch you over to across the street. And they know the plan number, right? You talk to those agents, they know it like the back of their hand. And they but, they do in their home market, right? And that's right, exactly. I, I had somebody come up to me and, and say, "Well, why would we? You know, we know all the plans, we know all the benefits. We don't, you know, we're seasoned agents. We really don't know." Too. I said, "Well, really?" I said, "Okay." In this county, I said, "But what about in the state? What about in the region? What about if you're selling nationally? I mean, there's no right. way you can remember all those plans, all those benefits." So, right. but Tabor does. So you know, let yeah. use it as your co-pilot to sell you know, in, in markets that you may not be familiar with. Yeah. When you say it learns from its mistakes, what would be a mistake? Um, that it doesn't answer something correctly, right? I mean, it says, or I can't answer that, or um, it, you know, it, it, would, it would come back with a question and ask you a question. I don't understand your question. I'm just using that as an right. example. And then you rephrase it and re-ask it. Um, because a lot of times we'll say, you know, an agent will go, oh, uh, you know, what's the best plan in North Carolina for this individual that has these diseases and is taking these, these drugs. It will come back and go, I can't answer that question because you haven't told me, you know, what zip code or county that individual's in. And so that's, so it's, it's not going to answer it. It's not going to, it's not going to make a mistake because it's not going to answer the question, but you just have to define, you have to. Usually the mistakes coming out of the agent that's not asking the question correctly. One way it learned that um, I saw this on a, a demo, I forget who it was. I, I think it was the, um, the FMO that you had in Oregon. They use an acronym for the plan names. Right. So it learns learns the acronym instead of the full plan name. Right. That was cool. It, 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 it learns all the vernacular, all the you know abbreviations. So yeah, yeah. it's pretty, yeah. It's... Awesome. Cool. Keith, you good? I'm still thinking of other questions, uh, but we can wrap up if you want. I think we got yeah. enough. Oh, how, how yeah. about this? You know how you describe, uh, Scott, um, the motto of alignment? That was really good that you said our motto, or I can't remember what you said, but you said it was better care equals better results and you know longevity. Uh -huh. What is the Tabor AI motto? or description or mission in, in 10, 15 seconds? Uh, I think to transform Medicare through the adoption of AI. Um, and I think that, and I say Medicare, and I, I'm not talking about just enrollment, right? I think Tabor has a much bigger uh, uh footprint than that i mean you know we're going to be able to you know take for example um and we, we're doing this currently with a couple of health systems policies and procedures member services i mean all those things that you know a lot of companies they offshore to malaysia or the philippines and you've got a call center out there that you know you can't understand the person you get frustrated and, and they're not answering your question Tabor is able to do all that. I mean, and, and, it, and it's it's going to be able to, you're going to be able to ask it questions. And and this is, you know, the next, this is the next 12 months, right? 
um, in my crystal ball. So the next 12 months you're going to have, and it already does, it already listens to all of our meetings and our demonstrations and, and it will, it will, it will summarize them and give you action, action items that you need to do. Um, so it will, it will be able to be your call center and talk to, talk to members, talk to patients and give them, um, give them, you know, what, whatever the question is, give them a, the correct advice. The same thing with with policies and procedures for large, you know, health systems and organizations. I mean, what do I do for slip and fall? What if I have a wrongful termination? All this stuff that that um, that are HR related, it's going to be able to respond to correctly very very quickly. Scott, have you seen like how Eleven Labs like you it can translate like they'll use your voice, you record your voice, and then you can you can have it say something that you didn't record. Right. But it uses your voice and then it can translate it into different languages and, you know, say it to people. It's crazy. yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, that's I call, I call Fidelity today. And the guy that answered said, you've already been verified based on your voice. Just by <laughs> me, my me saying, OK, my name is Keith Gleason and I you know, have a question or I want to transfer some money over. He already had me verified. He said it's a basically a voice fingerprint. Mm-hmm. And I knew well, that I, it was out there because there's yeah. the opposite of that. And they use that for fraud, right? These companies that'll call you and try and get you to say yes. And then they save that, record it, and then use that to get into your ATM card or what have you. So, you know, like if you, and I, I know this, like at Chicago Airport, it's all facial recognition. You go through TSA and it's all, right. thank you, Mr. Reed, go on through. Right. Uh, the the airport in Vegas is uh, the entire security check is all manless now. I mean, it's all it's all automated. So the world's changing. Um, and I, if you guys are going to Medicare, and I'm sure you're going to see that um, whatever the name of that airport is. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty interesting. I think it's an exciting time to be in the be in, in business. It's an exciting time to be in an industry that's going to be really affected by what AI can do. And I think, I think the people that adopt it first are going to, are going to be the big winners. And I think you're right. I think it's like the internet, you know, everybody went internet, what the hell is that search? What the hell is that? But uh, it's just the next iteration of it. Yeah. Awesome.